You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Peak Performance. Right on, we've done it. Um, the hotel version. Oh, I might actually have to hold this thing. The hotel version of the Low Pressure Podcast <laughs> with the host of the Long Underwear Podcast and Todd. <laughs> That's easy, buddy. Uh, well, hi guys, welcome to the, the hotel room. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me on your tour. Yeah, last time we did this, we were in a hotel room. It was just in That's a different r- place. That's right, actually, yeah. in Denver. That's right. So we just meet in hotel rooms. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> sounds suspicious. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks everybody. Yeah. <laughs> for, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, yeah, no, I'm stoked that uh, you guys are here. So last week I was just sitting at home and um, I decided uh, I saw that you guys had <clears throat> some Pow Town shows. I've been kind of paying attention to what it was and looked kind of fun. And uh, I realized I don't have anything to do next week. <laughs> but I want to go. I want to go and hang out with my friends. So I pretty much called. I think I talked to you guys and I called Wiley and he's like, "I just stay at my house." I'm like, "Done." Yeah. Booked a ticket, cruise, four day turnaround, and you were the uh, the only press to cover the Powtown Revival film tour, so we appreciate yeah. your presence in the tour. Right. Press. I don't really consider myself press, but media. Media. I guess so. Yeah. Your media. Press media. Sure. Yeah. You're telling stories. Yeah, that's true. I just wanted to come and have a good time. What about Mount Gazette? They're part of it too. Yeah. That, but they didn't actually show up to event in person. They they wow. helped us with the event. I think he would have come if he was available. Yeah. yeah. He had Shout to, out he Mike had to, Rogie. He didn't, had to take his kid trick or treating or something. Didn't he? He was in New York for a wedding or something too, wasn't he? Yeah, but um, for the Truckee show, his they they were trick or treating. It was oh, over Halloween. That's fair. He's got yeah. a cute little kid though. Yep. Yeah. Right, I'd take him trick or treating. <laughs> so yeah, Powtown Revival Tour, which is why we're here. Um, tell me about why it's like. What is it? How did it start? Let's give Let's give me the whole like. Yeah. The whole spiel. Uh, well, I can say my piece, but I think we have a similar vision. But maybe. Well, I think that Todd originally started it, and then I came on, took it over, and commercialized it, and made a logo, and named it something that Todd <laughs> may or may not like. But it was originally Todd's mm-hmm. <laughs> baby. Uh, well, okay. The first ones I did that were a little similar was uh, we did a Park City premiere with all the Armada films a few years ago, and they were really good, and it was already all compiled and everything, and I was kind of just thinking, I was like, wow, this is all kind of set up to take to some other spots. So that year, I had we did one in Salt Lake, which was a, a big, successful show, and then did another one in Truckee. Those were kind of the convenient ones, because I was in those spots. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of the you know, part where you realize it's like you don't necessarily need like the backing of a whole tour thing to do this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Just ask some people to be involved, ask maybe some venues, you know. Is it, I guess it's probably easier when you got um, more movies too, right? Because you have more I people mean, behind it. This this fall in particular, there's so many projects, but I mean, we have, you know, I mean, that's for sure part of the idea is to give the big screen space to a lot of these projects that will probably ultimately live on the web, you know? Mm-hmm. And in this case, it was pretty cool because we did have a lot of films that weren't out yet, you know? Yep. So you're seeing it before you have a chance to, you know, catch it on YouTube, but various stages of release. Um, but the other thing I think, uh, I was telling some of the story last night, uh, Bodie Merrill, um, he was on a little mini tour some years ago uh, with his own project and... Um, he did it, you know, I found out about it through Instagram and then he did this show in Truckee and it was just in a coffee shop, tiny little downstairs space, you know, and, uh, there was like 15 people. There. Yeah. I mean, you know, not many people, but that was fine for the size of the venue. You know, we were like sitting on the floor, but, um, really I just thought it was like, I remember it super well, you know, I thought it was like one of the coolest premieres I've ever really seen. Yeah, so a little, more, a little more intimate, a little more fun. Yeah. And he was there of course, like presenting it and you know, the people that were there were really liked it, you know, like it was super informal, you know, some kids had some like tall boys or whatever they like brought with them kind of thing. You know I mean? It was <laughs> like pocket beers and, um, yeah, I thought that was just, yeah, really cool. And, and also eye opening that you can, you know, there's many ways to do this. So, mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of neat too because it's not like um, like, like you get like the high end stuff like I have three which I put on which yeah. is like a multi day mm-hmm. festival but we right. also did before we brought the, the multi day to, to Whistler we did like a, a single night thing right mm-hmm. which yeah. is nice to just have that fun little event where you can like select specific movies and people can just it can be even more casual mm-hmm. 
right? Which is which I like, but I like the way that you did it too, is because it, there was really no parameters other mm. than th- where we're going and this is what we have to work with. Mm. And then you made then you made it what it was for the space mm. and the, and the town, right? I think that what like the other like kind of gist of Pow Town Revival was kind of keeping it community focused and community forward and like both Todd and I we just avidly love ski movies and snowboard movies and just the media of skiing and like you know we work so hard on these projects to then like know like last year during COVID when I had to release my snow pony film online and just like it was so anticlimactic like knowing you work your whole year or more towards something that someone's just going to watch on their phone (laughs) so I think we're both like really passionate about like seeing these films on a big screen and really more than anything with a proper sound system. Yeah, the audio is like audio is more yeah. important to us than visual sometimes just because like you want to have that feeling and like rock out and like get people together. And um, I think that like there's a lot of the tours um, are just really attached to like specific sponsors. And like so like there's a lot of athletes are, out there that aren't like a North Face or Red Bull or like Solomon athlete that have these like media companies behind them like ourselves, like Wiley, like Sam Cohen, you know, like that are still doing really amazing things. But like those projects, it's just nice to have a place where we can show those projects and put like the emphasis of the tour on the community and the skiing. And then like we were able to piece together like minor support along the way. So we kept all the shows were free. Most of the shows had like some sort of like free beer or free drink component. And like Todd and I aren't making money we weren't selling raffle tickets we weren't data mining we're just like doing it for the love of the films and the love of the ski communities and like like bringing it that way like kind of having that be the purpose Mm -hmm. rather than all the other purposes that might exist in like tours you know yeah that's what i that's what i was really like impressed about i'm like oh they're all free shows yeah and the fact that they're free shows but you had them in like massive theaters everything from like massive theaters like the one in bozeman and yeah. then to last night in the stagecoach <laughs> stagecoach is the funniest one i think was it yeah well so the stagecoach is like just the iconic party bar in jackson and so we were like okay if we're gonna have this event like essentially for our friends like let's have it somewhere where people already want to go it's like already everybody's favorite place to go and it has like a vibe to it but um we had one in a wine bar, like a cellar, like in Park City. Our friends own this wine bar called Old Town Cellars. And it was in this like dungeon space. And I was drinking like nice wine and it was super cozy. And then we had like kind of a big party at this like warehouse bar in Boulder that was sick. And then in Truckee, we had the um, premiere in like a community amphitheater space where we were able to just like Sierra Nevada provided us a bunch of beers. And so we were just like giving out free beer. And it was like, it's been kind of. And then Fisher Brewing was really cool too. I mean, that was probably our biggest show. That was our first show, and that was in Salt Lake. Yeah. And they have like this big courtyard, and um, it's hard to we see which one was the biggest over right. capacity. And, and right, you know, because the, the the venues are so different, so each time you're kind of like wondering. But yeah, they were basically they're basically base all capacity full. and stuff, which is that's fun for us. You know, the more the merrier for sure. But you also <clears> don't want to have people showing up who can't see, which again is this problem with like venues sort of like the stage coach where like all ages the viewing right? thing is a little <clears throat> hard. Yeah. All ages is <clears throat> yeah. ideal, but you know, a lot of times it's a good thing to do at bars. Cause then, you know, that's like how we could supplement the cost, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. we just Bring brought a bunch of, of money in. to the stage coach. So we didn't need to yeah, exactly. pay them. And if, if you get yeah. like hooked up with beer and you can say, here's some beer that's some, mm-hmm. this is the beer you're going to sell. We'll give it to you. And yeah. then, you know, There's sell it for five creative. bucks instead of seven bucks mm-hmm. or something. Right. Yeah. There's ways Each to show creative. is, yeah, it's done slightly differently, but the, the beauty is, is that there's ways to do it. You know, that's that's what you find out. You know, mm-hmm. you don't need. Uh, you so like I've done, I've done a lot of like event planning and stuff too. That's mm-hmm. why I was super impressed with. That's one of the reasons I wanted to come down because yeah, yeah. I'm well, like, there's so many different. You basically put on a film tour in all of these different venues that are so unsimilar. Like yeah. every single, it's like you're usually when you do like a tour of some sort. There's some sort of consistency. <laughs> no. do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, when yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, this is what our rate is. This is what this is having. This is this sponsor. This is whatever. And you yeah, can yeah. there's 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 a certain like touchstones that you can count on. Whereas with you guys, every single venue was different, as you said. Mm-hmm. Every single circumstance was different. Different sponsors, different towns. So basically, you had to create eight different events in eight different towns. Yeah. Which is mind-boggling to me. I, don't. <laughs> I mean, I don't like this phrase, but that's what happens when you just bootstrap it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we yeah. just did it. And, like, at the sh- at most of the shows, you know, Todd was, MC Todd was on the mic, and I was running the computer and running around. And, like, some of the shows, like, we were slaying beers, and, like, we just did it ourselves, door, you know? And we, like, you I think, 
I think we're like certified AV techs now just because we learned uh, so much about, about that. <laughs> that. That was, that's for sure. There's then. always a projector problem. Yep. That's what we yeah, learned. No, the most challenging part for how sure many with HD- the different <laughs> venues is the AV stuff, right? How, how many HD my cards did you go through? <laughs> well, it's a couple now, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah. The best was this. Uh, so we did a show in Sun Valley just on the porch at Grumpy's, which again is just like the iconic like kind of dirtbag bar in Sun mm-hmm. Valley that everybody goes to. And we had the screen propped up on like six gallon buckets and like zip tied zip to the, tied to the, the fence, fence thing. And, and then know. we had like the, the projector like held up with like a oh, what, a we beer box, box that we like cut up and taped together. But so. it worked, you know. But, <laughs> but it worked. People so were so funny. The shitty, when I was setting up in here, I was like, the shitty rigs. You got to go check out that. <laughs> this definitely would have applied to yeah. shitty rigs for sure. You got to check out that. But, but it was great. Right. People were psyched. And we had, a, good, good, we had a kick-ass good. sound system and a yeah. bunch of people out and their puffies. And it, You know, it's, it's funny because like... Like I said, I'm, that's why I, 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 I see if like I, I can relate to you a lot because we're both very detailed and we always want to make sure if we're doing something, we're making sure all of the things are in set and then there's like 20 details for each, each one of those specific items. You're like, this has to get done, this has to get done. You're always kind of scrambling and fr- frantic, but then by the time it actually is ready to go, you're like, well, there's nothing else I can do. I did the best I can. Let's have a good time. And right. then you just deal with it, right? Maybe yeah, a big totally. gust of wind blows away. Then you... Sure. Then Although you'd... we only had, you know, <laughs> with this kind of thing, you expect some sort of like technical difficulty type scenario. And there was really only kind of one of those. Amy can maybe mention. Well, whatever. the only yeah, technical difficulty we had was the one time where at the very beginning of the show, I just unplugged the power cord to everything. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, I mean, I feel like that's kind of impressive over the number of films we had and the number of... Uh, I think what was cool is like, so when you, and I've noticed because I'm on tour simultaneously with the Warren Miller movie right now. So I'm like in ski movie, like mega mode. And what you notice in any tour you do is like that each place has its own personality. And like, I think, the, like the like the people that are going, or yeah, just the, and yeah. like how the crowd responds to the movies and how they want to receive it. And I feel like each stop kind of actually reflected the personalities of the places we were going to, you know. And I think that the other thing is like. When you're putting, I mean, we wanted to show the films in the best light possible and like give people these viewing experiences and like we're all really proud of what we've made. So we like want that to resonate. But like the the truth of the matter is, is it's a free show with free beer. So if I accidentally unplug the whole thing and you have to wait for 10 seconds, like no big deal, you know, (laughs) like we don't have to issue refunds, like just taking the pressure off and like making it like grassroots, casual community. And then like. I think it, it did. Like every show reflected the community that we brought it to. I think. Yeah, that's the fascinating part to me. I was telling Wiley this last night. Last night it was cool because I haven't been actually to a, like a ski movie premiere. I don't think I don't know if I've ever been to like another ski town where mm-hmm. they've had their movie with their people in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Obviously, dozens and dozens of Whistler shows, mm-hmm. and you know when Logan Peota or Tatum or Kai or someone comes on the screen, everyone's like, yeah. Right. Yeah. And they pump up their home, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Pump right. Up their their hometown, their heroes. hometown yeah. hero, right? And then so watching it at the at Montana uh, at Bozeman the other day, mm-hmm. and just watching these movies, and then some of the people that I didn't know, a couple snowboarders, and just seeing people mm-hmm. like lose their minds. Or I'm right. like, oh, who's that guy? And like, yeah. they wanna, it's, it was cool to get that vibe and see, like, how people represent themselves, like in in Bozeman, which. I've never been to Bozeman. Yeah. It's a rad town. That was a cool event. That was a really cool event. I was really... The Bozeman show was awesome. I think it's interesting how, like, some different crowds are, like, more animated or, like, to cheer more or are really engaged, but, like, they're cool or, you know, like, mm. there's different, like... I mean, what we found, though, is I found, like, every stop, people were really engaged in the films, and then I basically every single place we went had so many people just basically thank us for doing it Mm -hmm. you know like thank you for bringing this here thank you for putting this on like thank you you know and we're all like god thank you for showing up because like we had no idea what was gonna happen because really when you think about it there's not like there's film tours but it's usually a one-off movie Mm -hmm. like the warren miller or tgr and then maybe they'll have like one other like auxiliary film but nothing really more than that so how often do a lot of these towns get a little mini film festival them coming through right yeah i think it's really common in europe Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, my friend lives in um, in Innsbruck, and she says there's something along the lines of this going on every week, all fall. And so I think that, like, there's enough of us making amazing content that, mm-hmm. like, why not spread the love? And I think it's good for, like, the ski, the ski community as a whole. And obviously, like, post-COVID, people are, like, jonesing to get back together and, like, reignite community. But, if, I mean, I think it's important to kind of share that. Like, I hate this term because it's kind of, like, cliche, but, like, collective stoke. Like, it is Mm -hmm. more fun when you get together and you do this thing. And, you know, I think that... 
and you get an opportunity also to show your own projects, right? right. That's super, which, which yeah. is if correct me if I'm wrong, but might have been I would assume would be kind of like the the seed of the whole thing. Like, hey, how can we present what we have better? And then they're like, well, why don't we? Get, this guy's got one. Why don't we add it? Why don't we add this? And then is that I, kind of how? It all I mean, absolutely. That's uh, part of it for sure. But I think on the other hand, it's it's fun for me to be able to like include people that I want to help showcase. help out or showcase really like again you know like with like phil casbon's film for instance like i just think he's awesome you know yeah that he was like cool, cool stuff it, you know and like cool, so yeah. uh to just you know show that for my own satisfaction because i'm like i think this is cool like people should see this or whatever you know and then just be able to do that you know it's mm-hmm. kind of neat so it, it sounds like this should be obvious yeah. but like what we've both found like a lot in the ski industry in general is like a lot of times people don't see or watch or engage or interact with things that they don't actually do you know what I mean? Like like urban skiing or, or just when like, you're a big mountain you, skier. You focus on your project and you don't watch anyone else's. So yeah. you if, if you're in a TGR movie, you end up just watching the TGR movie mm-hmm. and not anything else. And I think like that's not our vibe at all. Like especially Todd, but both both of us like basically watch every piece of ski content that comes out in the fall, like seriously. And Todd even watches most of the snowboard content that comes out. So like through that, we're able to like see like, oh, we're like this, like this fits. Like because we had a pretty like well-rounded like collection of films too and um so like sure it's about showing our own pieces but it's also i think that we are just two people that watch a lot of ski content and kind of are able to actually see what's going on out there and and you want to show people right like because you you see all this stuff and you know that because you watch more than most right and you're like well and that it brings up certain thoughts and opinions and like oh that's interesting about this and like you say you watch something like phil's movie Mm -hmm. for the first time and then the next day while you're making toast or whatever, a thought pops into your head that engages you. Like, oh, that was cool how they did that. Uh, and then, like, oh, man, it wouldn't be nice to experience that with someone or be able to discuss this with someone. That's kind of how I am with a lot of things is I overthink everything or I always analyze things the next day or the day after. And it's mm-hmm. um, it's it would be awesome to be able to say, hey, what did you think about that? Or what did you do with that? Mm-hmm. Which you don't really get that experience when you're sitting watching a ski movie by yourself. Totally. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. I can see that maybe as being like, okay, let's get together with all these people and then maybe afterwards have a beer and talk about True. this segment or the way this was edited or, or you know, the wicked s- sound system in that bit. Like when you mentioned sound system earlier, when your movie came on, yeah, yeah. the Wu-Tang track, yeah. I was sitting like right dead center. I'm like, oh, bumps, yeah. People love that when that comes on. Yeah. I think though too, it's about like finding those people that we know, like Phil, like Wiley, like both of us that, like I said earlier, like aren't part of these like media behemoth sponsors, but are still working really hard to create stuff mm-hmm. and like giving them a place to show something too. Like kind of finding that camaraderie in those people, you know? Mm-hmm. Like we're in you know, if like you have a media house behind you, you know, it makes it easier to like host and a, a and a staff and yeah, yeah money. But, like not all of us have that. And right. so like, you know, I think that Wiley was like an obvious, obvious choice for us to like bring on board right away. And like same as Sam Cohen, you know, he's been making his own, um, films forever. True. We yeah. were, we were supposed to have Sammy Carlson's film. <laughs> well, okay. So this is the other thing is, is it, uh, how we ended up with the collection that we had was, I mean, various factors, but for sure, like a lot of people aren't done with their projects. Like mm-hmm. I think it would be really cool to do something that's like push it like a month forward even or something, but after so the season started, everyone already. is scrambling to get it done. People like we were, were getting always... like our last files, like day of like yeah. that first show. Yeah, and so like yeah. Sammy's yeah. project, like still isn't quite even finalized. And now we're at like the end of the tour, but mm-hmm. like my project, yeah, I didn't download Came down the wire. Right? Yeah. I didn't download the final version of my project until like 9 AM on the first day of the show. Or whatever, right. right. So. Well, let's talk about your projects. Okay. Cause obviously there's a film, there's a whole tour mm-hmm. kind of, like I said, which probably started because I want to be able to show this to people, right? Because you had mentioned you did Snow Pony last year, and like not a lot of people really got to see it. And well, we wanted to do this last year. Yeah. Um, we, oh, it, oh, yeah. But COVID, we couldn't do it. So the it just gave you was, an extra year to plan yeah, for it. Yeah, our intention was to start it last year and have our films from last year be a part of it. Mm-hmm. But we did it this year instead. <laughs> right. So you had like the, the, the most mega pow segment I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was constructed... Uh, it took me a long time to finish it, as Amy knows, but Brady Perrin, like, was, like, so instrumental in that. Like, he's awesome, you know? So thank you to Brady um, for helping me, like, you know, finish what that looked like, you know? Was it, you said it was just filmed, like, over a week? No, but it was one, like, kind of cycle, you know? I think it was over 
probably it was all filmed here in jackson wyoming uh and um you know there's a couple like inbound shots in there like people wouldn't really expect that you know what i mean inbounds neck deep and you're what like seven five (laughs) (laughs) not quite but Yes, taller than your. He's six two one eighty, which he tells me is a perfect male model body. So hey, I didn't, I didn't come up with this. <laughs> I think you're taller than six two, aren't you? No, six two. The beard makes him look taller. I'm yeah. six one. I thought you were like six three or six yeah. four. Honestly, yeah, you appear taller. Yeah, well, I don't know. I guess you I'll hold yourself you high. I'm trying to get on this. Bitch, so <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just, you know, for me, uh, it's just you have the footage. It's like. Might as well. I mean, I have a lot of other stuff that's unused as well, you know. What well, I, mean? I think what you forgot there. to mention is it's all footage that hit the, hit yeah, the no, floor well, for a TGR no, part. No, it was stuff from a TGR Yeah, yeah I wouldn't footage, say it wasn't 100%. But, there was a couple of shots. But most of those shots didn't yeah, make the flick. Correct. Yeah. So and there's basically like yeah, a whole no. flick that didn't make the flick. Right. Yeah. So yeah, just, just shape <laughs> Being in there yesterday, something. like the TGR offices, and uh, I saw like stacks and stacks and stacks of hard drives, and I was asking Max Ritter, I was like, are those just like backups? He's like, no, that's for this year coming up. Like yeah, we're, we're wow, starting, we're wild. starting out of that. And then we went into another room and there was like this another like mountain of hard drives. And I'm like, is this too? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, like, who, who does that? He's like those two people in there. And they're yeah. just like, they already look super yeah. defeat. I, cu- I couldn't imagine. I mean, I've often, you know, made a lot of projects that way of, and I'm super grateful that they're, they're keen on like sharing that footage. Yeah. Um, but I always wonder like, there's also a, and then there's also you know, a plus, right? There's a right. plus, but then there's like a or like I just, second tier. I just think that everybody, you know, a particularly in, in a movie, movie like, uh, yeah, I think with TGR, it's just, uh, you know, they're cutting it down to this hour ish thing. And there's a lot of footage every year and you get it's a lot not, of it's not like personal, you know, I mean, it's just like how the movie ends up getting cut and like what they really have space for in a lot of cases. So I, I've always thought that like, Especially take someone like Sage, who, uh, you know, so prolific, gets a lot of shots, but he hasn't really done that. I don't, you know, I haven't seen him like mine his own stuff. But I really think the main thing is, is that it's important for me to like review that media and like also more than once, like well after it's shot or whatever, you know, because sometimes you'll, you'll like miss a shot. You're like, oh, actually, I like, I like this. I like yeah. passed over it the like first photos time. photos too. Whatever, I'll take know? a yeah. bunch of photos one Same day. Same thing with like, photos. Mm. And then, but also the selects from whether it's like the filmer or the editor might just be very different than yours and that's for sure true with photos as well like i tried my best to get a look at like the batch of photos because almost 100 percent of the time my selects of like photos and stuff are not the same as the different from someone right? else's eye how they see it how yeah, they yeah. interpret it how they yeah. you know approach their art right so yeah. that's that's actually an emerging theme i, I keep mm-hmm. saying that word on this show halfway through this season mm-hmm. emerging themes every yeah. year there's a, some sort of an emerging theme and, and, mm-hmm. and one of them there's a couple one is like goal setting a lot of people talking about setting goals and that sort of thing. And then the other one is athlete edits mm. and me trying to get everybody to get their footage together to see athlete edits yeah. because I, because of the way people see themselves mm-hmm. and, and want them. It basically, I want to see how people want people to see them ski. Right, right, like right. It reflects their personality. It reflects their style. It reflects them as a person mm-hmm. instead of like, you know, you get a great company like TGR that can select bangers and they've got great music and mm-hmm. they create their overarching storyline and theme for that specific movie. Mm-hmm. But I want to see how Todd or how Amy approaches their footage and I want mm-hmm. to see how you want me to see you, mm-hmm. right? I right, want right. you to present yourself, your, um, you know, your, your energy and your um, aesthetic and like music selection. All that right, stuff right, is right. a representation of you. And I really wish there was more of that. I know that with like smaller edits, you get it, but mm-hmm. for those bigger, bigger projects, mm-hmm. um, I know yeah. I know TGR does like the athlete edits. Yeah, but like in this case, the ones they're putting out, I think they're still withholding a lot of the A plus because they footage. they want to keep that for the film. You That's know, which um, I understand because you know when I go see a film like that, I don't want to have already have seen yeah. all the A plus like, either. Like, I want to I want some of that footage to be new. Like so. Hollywood movies, when you get the trailer come out and it's yeah. like after two minutes, you're like, I think I just watched the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a process to that, but yeah, ultimately, I think depending on what those b- big uh, films are doing year to year, sometimes they do like a slightly more athlete thing, or at least historically that used to be more the case. You know, I think that's mm-hmm. in snowboarding for sure. That's still more true, where like an athlete might be like showcased. But at yeah. least of recent, it There's seems like they're much more There's not really even like athlete based. segments even. And um, I guess MSP yeah. was pretty athlete segment focused this year. But still I still haven't seen it. I, of course I will. Yeah. But yeah, I still haven't seen it. So, 
But I mean, I used to do the same thing with like my extra Warren Miller footage and stuff too. Mm-hmm. You know, make a little athlete, athlete edit of it. And like the truth of the matter is, is these companies are making big films and there's a lot of good shots that don't get used. So it's kind of like up to you to get crafty with that and put it out there. You work hard, so you might as well. Exactly. Have it let's be, be seen. economical with it, yeah. right? Like, why is yeah. why is it not being used? Like, there's well, and there's and no a, limit to what we can put out. I'm excited. At some point, we'll see when it happens. But I have historically built those things out of footage that wasn't used in films, mm-hmm. just because I figured if you know if it had that place, then people saw it there. I didn't need to like recycle it or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but at some point, it will be fun to like dig yeah, in and actually is. use some of the. A pluses that were in the film and, and build that into something yeah. too. I it's it's amazing. Point, yeah. It's amazing to think about how much footage that there still is that never ever gets. Well, touched. that's the same. Oh, especially same with, thing with photos people, and stuff right? too. Like when you're saying you go to the TGR office and you see those all those stacks drives and stacks, and stacks of well back in film, you know, some of that stuff still like like a wheelbarrow full of drives. You could like so I, I mean I would encourage like I mean Sage is a busy man or whatever, but I think it would be so cool <laughs> for him to like dig in and pull his own slacks yeah. and stuff, even though he was but that's my favorite stars. That's my favorite part of Wiley's movie. Um, his movie Connection to Gravity this year yeah. he has a little archival chunk of like old shots and like I, that was one of my favorite parts like yeah like that seven and Tuscarora like, yeah I, mean, I remember that shot from when it was in the movie but it's fun to see again you mm-hmm. know like. Kind of like, I was like, it's kind of like, uh, I asked him, it's kind of like Hoji movie kind of, before I saw it, it's kind of like Hoji's movie sort of style, and he's like, well, a little bit, yeah. a little bit of history and a little bit yeah. of what's going on in his life and, and where he's coming from and where he's going, which was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And I like that because that was back to the the variety of films that you had. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't pow, smash, bangers. It was like creative projects like Phil's movie mm-hmm. with like really, really interesting yeah. editing and, and effects. And then you got Wiley's movie, which is got great skiing in it, but it's got a really cool story, a little more documentary mm-hmm. feel. Then you've got uh, your movie, which is just the soul satisfying pal smash, yeah, which yeah. I thought was rad with a rad beat. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got your movie, which is fascinating <laughs> and like really unique Very and different, really unique and different. Uh, we, had, we 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 showed strictly create film too, and then, their yeah, wild card which wild we card we were really excited about yeah, showcasing awesome those guys that, just because yeah. strictly create is just like a group of younger kids um, out of primarily Boulder in Montana that just they're just making it happen and they're really creative and like There's three I feel movies like, this year yeah so we were yeah. just showing wild card which is more their like backcountry like mm-hmm. it was bangers bangers yeah. bangers, bangers bangers but we bangers. did have some street like we had uh, Slim to None Keegan Kilbride's yeah, project yeah we showed Keegan Slim the, you know we had to do we were a little showing bit Mike of, Hornbeck's project too we had um, to do a little really shifting cool. here and there just because we were trying to include like sort of something local or like relevant to each spot so we you know we juggled the playlist a little bit uh, from place to place which, which is cool because you tailored to the audience right yeah. Um, but like you said, the eclectic mix is super helpful because like then we sort of had the mountaineering aspect going on with Sam. Yeah, Finding thing, Fury. You know? And uh, so it was a good. I good wonder mix if you and, can. I wonder if I don't know if you've thought about this, but if you can get like access to them, just throw like you have the Powtown website. I wonder if yeah. you just create a page and then just once everything's out and like online, we'll put that on the. We have powtownrevival.com is our website, and right now you can like link to anybody that has a trailer. It's linked on there for all of the main films we shown we show we've shown. But as all the films get released, we'll put them. So on people the can go. People can go and like watch it in the order of how you That's guys curated it. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Todd wasn't super integral in the the website part of Pat. Yeah, no, thank you, Amy. <laughs> yeah, as as I think it was kind of discussed earlier. Uh, for sure, it was a team effort, but Amy brought some professionality to it that would have been missing otherwise. That's for sure. Yeah. Just came in, but as, we got as, we got a shout out to our friend Eric Kirshner too, who designed our logo. Hmm. And I told him I was like, I can't pay you but I can give you an airbag, my Scott airbag. I'll give it to you if you make us this yeah. logo. Which, I mean, is it's like huge, an which is a nice expensive thing, piece think, of know? equipment. Really so. case, of fat, a case of Sierra. He Sierra doesn't want the Sierra. He wants the $1,200 <laughs> airbag backpack. Done, done. But I was actually looking, so I was uh, analyzing the, the logo actually when we were mm-hmm. at Bozeman's. I was sitting. Yeah. And it is really cool because it's like ski ski tracks. The ski but tracks it's are the, the film strip. It's yeah. the film strip. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of, like I said, I would expect nothing less from, from you, Amy, with, with the detail. Well, I was trying to keep it casual and not go over. No, it was good. It was <laughs> perfectly done. So I want to talk about Boots Over Brim. Yes. So this is a very, you're both in that. Um, I have so Todd's many. a principal dancer in the film. I was going yeah. <laughs> to okay. 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 bring that up uh, with you later. But <laughs> did you guys, did, so I know you said you grew up dancing with your dad and stuff. And that's the whole point of the movie, which I'll uh, yeah. uh, get to in a minute. But I still want to get to Todd dancing because I was like, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Did uh, you go through like dancing classes or lessons? Or did well, you just... not classes. We, but Amy, because she's 
a really good teacher. Her and her dad, like, actually were doing that at one point, teaching people specifically. Oh, really? And they, they still have that skill set, but it's not on a professional level, I guess, anymore, right? Yeah. You know? um, but anyways, no, I, I of course, I can dance a little bit, I hope, but no. Uh, You're an Amy, athlete. You yeah, yeah, exactly, I guess. dance on skis yeah, all sure. the time. But, we, uh, but, we had you know, rehearsals. But Amy, yeah, we had some, you know, days leading up to that shoot that make sure that, like, some things were dialed. I think maybe we got some, I'd like to see that footage actually at some point, because I think we had some stuff that we did that, what is, you know, didn't Oh, we had a couple of, like, sequences. We were kind of, like, practicing sequences so we could, like, film it in, like, short bites, kind of. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would be fun to see, like... The yeah. actual, like a full and we had like a couple time. lessons with my dad where we yeah, like, her dad was we dialed in yeah, how to was, like yeah because he's the, he's in your the position lead, you right? need to like know yeah. the proper you know way to distribute the weight when you're doing a dip or whatever and so his there's, there's his a lot of technique really helpful, actually you know? right, so before we get too too far ahead let's actually can you outline the project yeah. for people listening so it's a country country music country dancing ski themed video yeah I, I don't know if I'm like pitching it the right way because I think I'm pitching it pitching it in a way where people are like what is that but it, the point is it's called boots over brim and it's really really fucking cool so you should watch it <laughs> and it's totally different than anything I've ever seen come out of the ski industry and certainly anything I've ever done and super um, creative yeah but really really interesting sweetgrass I worked with sweetgrass productions on it and I've been wanting to work with sweetgrass forever basically they, since they, their they were one of the originators of changing things up as mm -hmm. well right with uh, Valhalla which was an mm -hmm. awesome ski movie but it was so different than what we normally get which is no surprise to me that they were working on this project well I just wouldn't I don't think I would have entrusted this concept to anyone else but them mm -hmm. you know their their entire eyes Zeppelin Zirp was the is the director and it was actually his idea that um because I went to Sweetgrass I was like I just I really want to work with you this is how much money I have like what can we do? And they went to Zeppelin, and Zeppelin had actually been with me. So the story, Zeppelin? Zeppelin's Europe is the director. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the story of the title, Boots Over Brim, comes from, this happened twice. My dad and I were dancing at the cowboy bar, and we've been kicked out twice for doing inverts on the dance floor. Like, that's their rule. No boots over brim. known that you're not allowed to do that. So well, you knew we pushed you were running it. The, the first time we got out, kicked huh? out, we didn't know. But the second time, we were like, ah, fuck it. Let's throw it. And then, like, there's no, like, excuse me, ma'am, sir, please don't do backflips on the dance floor. They're just like, get out now. No that's boots why, over brim. Get out. That's why I was trying to get you guys to come out last night. I'm like, let's go. Well, and I want to get you kicked any, out. We don't know any of the inverts yet. We haven't gotten that far oh, yeah, with Todd's bad, dance yeah. lessons. So. Oh, so that's why I was trying to get you to come. So we added up there with Wiley last night. There was a band on stage. There wasn't a ton of people. I'm like, let's go. There was a band. Let's go. Go and get you kicked. I'm like, yeah. I want to see it happen. Todd and I we need to we need to learn our inverts at some point. We'll get there. Right. But um, but anyway, Zeppelin was with me one time at the Cowboy where he's like, yeah, man, like I dance, whatever. Let's go to the Cowboy bar and party. Mm -hmm. And then like he just like didn't know that like no, I fucking dance. And he was like wallflower. And he was just like because I was line dancing. And I found this cowboy and I was twirling. And he was like, whoa. And so he remembered that and he was like just super. I don't know, just. Basically, probably just, like, could see my passion for it. And, like, when he heard of, like, the opportunity to direct a project with me, he was like, let's do this. And he came to me with the idea of, like, this dance ski film. I was like, I don't know, dude. It sounds weird. Like, people aren't going to like that. Like, it's going to be, nah, I don't know. And then I thought about it for, like, a day. And I called him back and I was like, fuck it. That sounds amazing. Like, that's, like, all my favorite stuff ever. It sounds so fun. Let's just do it. And it's, like, the first time I've had the confidence to, like, do something just because I thought it was cool. Yeah. You know? And not because I thought it was – anyone else was going to think it was cool, which who even knows, you know? Like, I mean – Well, you, I think that the, the, the feedback has been extremely I positive. think people actually do think it's cool. And, and beyond that, you know, we both were really – Zeppelin and I were both really inspired by this musician, Paul Cawthon. So all the music in the film is by Paul Cawthon and – I tried to actually use his music in Snow Pony and like couldn't afford it and couldn't make it happen. And you, so, you stalked him, you said. Yeah. So I spent this whole summer basically stalking Paul. Um, <laughs> I call him Paul now. I have his number. We text. And when I say we text, I text him and like he doesn't respond. But anyways, I like I like told Todd, I was like, Todd, we got to go to this music festival in Washington, in, in Wyoming, in Whitefish, in, um, in Montana. Sorry. <laughs> Ugh. Montana. Um, Montana. Whitefish, Montana. I was like, we got to go up to Whitefish, Montana. Paul's playing this music festival. And we just got to go up there because I'm going to like meet him and convince him to let me use his music, which is like an absurd plan. You know, there's like mm -hmm. 20, 30,000 people at this music festival and me thinking that I'm going to bump into like one of the marquee artists is absurd. Were you one of those girls that like, like uh, when you were younger? That would go to concerts and like wait backstage. Never, never. Like wait, I'm not like a groupie. No. I'm not a groupie. I'm a groupie for Paul, I guess. But I had an intention of my groupiness. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: I did bump into him in the crowd 
at this music festival. And I we had a mutual friend where I was able to, like, convince her to, like, give me his number, which was, like, a little suspect, yeah. you know, like, kind of weird. And so I was like, Paul, like, we have this mutual friend, Marcella, like, mm-hmm. you know, I got your number, and I was wondering if I could reach out to you. I told him about the project, and I was a skier, and, you know, he's just partying, and there's girls everywhere, take my set, picture. You know? he's, and, like, out. And, and he was like, yeah, yeah, and... like, text me, give me a kiss on the cheek, which felt like he really heard me. And so anyways, I ended up connecting with him and going to a few more of his shows, actually, throughout the summer, just to kind of, like, hit it home. And we were negotiating with his manager over music rights, and which is, like, the hardest part of making anything um, mm-hmm. media-related. It's, like, half the budget, usually, isn't it? Not, no, not in this case. I mean, we didn't have... Well, normally, is it not something... Is it's it, a lot. Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah. It can be a lot. It doesn't have to. Anyways, his manager came back with a number that was, like, astronomically out of our budget and I like sent Paul this like really heartfelt text message like about how like his music inspired the project and it's never been used in action sports and da 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 and like he never responded he he like double hearted you know and you just like tap the text and you get like yeah. a heart like not a real response yeah. and then like three days later his manager emailed us back and was like okay we agree to your terms so it was like it did like I don't know so like he talked to him in one of our like production meetings Zach Ramis the producer was like um he was like, oh, you manifested this. And I was like, it was it manifesting or is it just stalking? Like- a little bit of both. Yeah, <laughs> it worked. Because like, it, it is a little manifesting because you ran into him in the crowd. Right? Yeah. Oh, I saw him and I just to- like ran. I was like, Todd. And I like threw my I was, beer like, and like ran the through the water line festival. or a beer line. And then she just took off running. I was like. Uh, you know, and then I figured out what was going on and he rolled up with a beer. You're like, hey, hey, hey Paul, what's up? But no, I, uh, the project itself, I'm really proud of how it came together. We have it go through, the inspiration was to have the film go through three tempos. Yeah, because there was the, the three the three segments and basically for people listening, what it is, is it blends kind of the the similarities and in movement between the dancing and then skiing. Yeah. Um, and it, sh- it cuts from, you know, dancing scene to, you know, some really rad, some of your skiing footage to dancing scene to skiing footage. It's all very blended, but mm. that comes, that's like kind of by design. I grew up a dancer. Um, I gave up ski racing at like 13 years old, 12 years old, ski racing and dance become like really serious. And I, chose dance and I was a ballerina. I danced on toe till I was 22. I danced all through college. Really? Um, I did all the different disciplines, ballet, jazz, hip hop, lyrical. I was choreographing stuff. And then in high school, I joined a competitive ballroom dancing team. Um, and we would travel everywhere and perform and dance. And my dad ended up actually getting in. My dad is so amazing for like he's single dad you know he wished I was gonna be like a baseball player or something but instead I was like a dancer so he's like okay like I'll build the sets and I'll be on the board of directors for your dance team and then when we when I joined this partner um this ballroom team you know he he grew up a cowboy up in Idaho so he st- he had some like dancing in him somewhere you know like old-fashioned two-stepping and the instructor of the team needed a dance partner so he became the dance partner of the instructor and we went on to dance at Disneyland, and then my dad and I started teaching, and we specialized in teaching aerials, like flips and all that stuff, and we would travel through Nevada and Vegas and SoCal, and we'd go to these big swing dancing conventions and <laughs> cool. teach dancing and compete in competitions. So, like, dancing is, that's my athletic background, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, that's who, the athlete I am is because of the dancer I was, and I think that so much of, like, skiing to me is rhythmic and is about grace and touch and style like when I look to skiers that like I admire it's it's about those like ineffable qualities someone has when they move their body which to me like is the same as a dancer so I think dancing and skiing for me like grace is always my number one word when I think about skiing Mm -hmm. like I want to be a graceful skier and so like it's almost like inevitable that at some point those two would come together and like you can see the similarities, you're moving your body through space, you know, whether Mm -hmm. you're skiing or dancing or whatever you're doing. And so it's all kind of related that way. And then the piece moves in three different tempos. So the first tempo is a line dance, which I love line dancing. Um, Spent my whole summer going to this like sketchy bar in Sparks, Reno called Pure Country. It's in a strip mall next to a Big Lots. And I would like go out dancing like every weekend, just like getting all vibed up for the thing and then the second um tempo is like a, a country western like two step or slow slow dance kind of romantic kind that's of vibe where the, the smoky stranger ah, that's right. where todd, yeah. todd's part is the second second tempo and that's kind of mixed with a really cool pow segment that we filmed in wyoming and just got you know that dreamy beautiful 
mm-hmm. pass skiing. And then a, the third tempo is country swing with like big flips. And that's a, the scene that my dad comes in and he's my dance partner and that's mixed with Alaska skiing. So, mm-hmm. um, that's, that's a cool project. Cause you got the people that you love involved with it. Mm-hmm. You're doing the things you get to combine your two personal like loves. That Literally you, yeah. my two biggest passions. It's like your dream project. It really is. Was it in, kind of intimidating for you a little bit or unnerving uh, for you? Because you're like, I want you to be in this movie. You're going to be in this movie and you know her passion for it and how much. And you're like, it was well, like, Mom, my first reaction was I knew it needed to be well done. So I was like, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be this person, you know. But then on the other hand, uh, obviously it makes sense with like the romantic vibe. And uh, you can't and, have some you random. Know, I, yeah, I, I wasn't nervous like from a personal performance standpoint. I just wanted to do a good job. I definitely, let's just put it this way. I didn't say, Todd, will you do this? I said, Todd, (laughs) you're doing this, kind of. But Um, we've always had, like, good, like, dance chemistry. And I never had any, like, where I thought, I knew Todd would be perfect. He loves dressing up like a cowboy. He loves, like, getting into cowboy character. Like, and the cameras come on and the lights. She still says the statement just because one time I was, like, shaved my beard into like a uh, tombstone looking thing and I was like hey look I could be in a movie well he put on so this whole says, costume like he put on this whole costume come downstairs and he was like take a picture of me in this ridiculous western thing he's like see I could do Hollywood yeah, okay <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it works it works but, but anyways, you did uh, you crushed everybody always like that first is that like role playing your first like, like role playing <laughs> I mean I guess but I think it's a stretch to say that like I love dressing up like a cowboy or something well you look good as a cowboy Maybe that's I, a better to, to I would be fair I have very little um background that way like you yeah. know we you she could tell you a story about like time we rode horses you know in mexico or something well, that's, like being a cowboy you know, and looking I like don't know a how to cowboy horse, are two really, different things you know, right yeah. like yeah. like like I, I would tell you like it she's not wrong right like right. i saw you on that film I, and i've seen you know, the boots were mine the hat's mine i guess, well, every, I guess the whole cool. outfit was mine the, the, like, the, outfits, stuff, man. the stetson hat we talked a lot about stetson hats this week but yeah wiley tried to get me to buy one yeah. <laughs> as soon as i Todd's wearing a stetson in the film and that hat was actually a uh, part of a ski race from when he was racing ncaa's in college at steamboat yeah they gave everybody who was so it was a ski NCAA racing cowboy hat championships you know they have that People will be familiar with FM Light and Sons. It's like a legendary old cowboy coolest, shop coolest in Coolest cowboy Steamboat. store ever. But anyway, so everybody who had qualified or was at the NCAA championships got the Stetson. So that's like the cowboy hat I've had ever since then. You know? Yeah, it's a nice hat. It, it is works. nice hat. It works for you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you what, yeah, it works for you. That. Now, with the, with, did you, where was the bar that you filmed it into? And then let me ask you this, too. <laughs> Just for aesthetics, I was gonna ask you: did, did you grease up your legs in that first scene? No, it's hot. When I was like, I was sweating my ass. When you off. walked into the park, so I remember. I remember watching the first scene. It was really well done, where you like get out of the car and you walk in, and it's like a shot up of the legs. I'm like, oh, she totally greased those up mm. for sure. No, I was just like sweating like a crazy person. So we shot the whole dance scene in one like mega day, and we did it at this bar out on your way to Camus called the Notch Pub, mm-hmm. and we filmed from like six o'clock in the morning to like. 4 p.m. at night. So we did that all during the day and, and completely they fabricated. You, and they let you use the bar just for that? Or were like people like drinking and watching you guys? No, uh, we closed it down. We had it to ourselves. We also like did a lot of set design. We like hung our own animal heads and like moved stuff around. We put blackout, you know, curtains on the... Um, on the windows and, and Mike Brown, Michael Brown was the kind of the director of photography on the piece and he's a, a lighting genius. So we built all these yeah. lights out and Spectacular. we had... Spectacular. It was, it was like a whole thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And But then we were also... Filming the dancing, you know, it was it was a big day of dancing, and so I was honestly, I was just like literally sweating buckets like the whole time, <laughs> just like pouring sweat. But thankfully. shout out to the extras because yeah. it wouldn't have really worked, and you know, we shot our scene at like eight in the morning or something yeah. Like Todd and I's so, dance scene know. was the first one we shot, so we shot that first scene in the morning with kind of no one there because we the hope was to have it be like kind of non-linear, like non-literal, and have it be a little bit of a dreamscape where like, you know. Mm-hmm. not reality so like when we get into our romantic dance scene it's like you know the rest of the world fades away so it was just like us alone in a spotlight dancing but we were able like thank you so much to all of our friends that we were able to basically force into coming out to campus utah to like pretend to party all day on a monday and so people got into it i mean you have I mean, to it's, it makes and they it all dressed up and have, everybody you know, learned the line dance so i i choreographed the line dance that we did for yeah. the piece in the first and, part yeah yeah and so then we taught it to all the extras and everybody was totally doing it was so great like and so it was really we couldn't have done it without all the friends kind of coming out and it's like getting 30 plus people to come out at nine o'clock in the morning on a monday to pretend to party is like not a small act it turns into a party <laughs> it did, like, it yeah, yeah it which did. is great but you know it it's did. also strange because it was like a monday or something it was a well. monday you know yeah. it's the time where the venue 
is well we had to do it at a time you know, where we, the day or whatever and we oh we could, thought they were gonna operate conscious. that night and they it turns out they didn't so yeah. we probably could have but like we couldn't afford to buy out a bar for a saturday night and have a real party oh, absolutely. you know yeah. we had to we could afford the monday morning slot get some friends <laughs> over order some get some some beers and order some pizzas kind of thing yeah well that's cool well, it's a really cool project i thought it was i thought it was unique and neat and it was a cool I guess it was kind of a good catalyst to get the tour started as well and create all of these different movies in, in different styles. Um, so now, obviously, winter's here, almost. You're... It snowed last night. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and got a little snow this morning when we woke up. Right. Um, and so you're, you're like you said, you're doing the, the ski tour. Like You're going to Seattle tomorrow, tonight. Today. I need to be I'm in Seattle drop you off the airport in like three like half hours. hours. <laughs> drop me off at the airport in like half an hour. And then, like, so you're traveling around doing the tour. Um, are you getting, what are you, what are you doing right now for getting set up for the winter? Uh, well, so today I'll go back to Truckee. Um, are you flying out today too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like four, a later, later yeah, flight. We'll, um, and really, I mean, we got to ski out there a little bit because they had this huge storm and, and, uh, Palisades opened up for a few days, which was cool. It did? Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We skied on Halloween, which was Actually, I was trying to think. I think that was like probably the first time. What do you I think of the name? Out. What do you we, think of the we name? We didn't ski on Halloween because I, I had COVID, but yeah. <laughs> Todd oh, yeah. skied. Right, okay. You okay. didn't get it? Uh, no, no, but she was very diligent about... We you, isolated away from each you know, other. Did it so. by the book, I think. and so mm-hmm. Followed protocol. So I didn't go skiing. But it, hopefully that's COVID. a... Hopefully that means I have some antibodies. At the there we go. Too, yeah. you know, know. Do you know what? Uh, without getting too much into it, my, my brother's wife or my sister-in-law, I guess, is a uh, works as like a call center. Um, when people call, like, hey, I think I might have COVID, and, and mm-hmm. like the it's like the step before contract tracing, mm-hmm. and and like her family got it, mm-hmm. I ended up getting it, and she's heard all these stories that just doesn't make any sense. Some people get it, some people won't. You could lick someone's yeah. face and well, you won't you know, get it, and then be like ten feet away. We think we were so. exposed last winter. And yeah, we've had and we're both vaccinated and, too, you know, so. Mm-hmm. But it's like it was do, you know? part of the deal. Yeah, so you're stuck in the house for ten stuck, days. stuck in the room for ten days. Yeah. And Todd got free reign. Todd's out to be in the Palisades. <laughs> what do you think about the name, the Palisades name? You know what? I was on the naming committee for. Oh, yeah? yeah. So I was part of the all the meetings and the focus groups and stuff, working on the new names, and I think that. You know, fundamentally, I would have a problem if they bulldozed KT, but I don't honestly care. Like, if the name is inappropriate or causes someone else pain, like, good riddance. You know, there's nothing, like, why would I ever want something that brings me so much joy to cause anyone any pain? And, like, the mountain doesn't change when the name changes. So, like, in a lot of ways, I I care about the name because I don't want it to cause others harm, but I also just don't care what it's called. It's still my favorite place to be. It's my favorite place to ski, and I think Palisades is a word that we associate with the mountain because, you know, of the Palisades and it's an mm-hmm. iconic part of the mountain. There's a lot of history there for like ski history and it's a fun place to like go. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's a, one of my favorite things is to, you know, when the resorts open 4th of July to hike the Palisades on 4th of July and like party up there or whatever. So I think that being on the committee, I think that if people knew the other name options, which I can't disclose, but they, would like this one over the other ones that I was presented I thought with. It would, I thought it was good. And yeah. I thought that the rollout that they did, the the logoing and the branding is really, really good. And the way they rolled it out, I so things like that, I'm usually like, eh. It's, a, mm. it's just a hard battle and you're but not going to please I, everybody. I, it seemed like there was pretty good feedback and people were like, yeah, that's actually pretty decent. I mean, mm. to be fair, around yeah. town, I think yeah. there's still a lot of people that there's a There's a lot of people around town that are wearing the old name, uh, like, accustomed to that, stuff. Yeah. Like and they will for a long time. Yeah, cause... like, I guarantee you, so I'm going to the Palisades Tahoe Warren Miller show and I was at the Palisades, like, MSP show and it's it's almost like a, a thing where everybody's wearing, like, the old logo where, like... I, are you sure it's that or they just, or just there's so much of that product around they just don't want to buy new both, stuff both, that, right? both I think that there's I think it's just hard for people like you know it's it's hard for me to adapt I think that the 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 term squaw is maybe the word I've seen said most in my entire life right like I was born out there I spent my whole life has revolved around that so like for me to eliminate a word out of my lexicon that it's probably one of the words I've said the most is hard like I was doing a interview about the name change a couple months ago and I said squat 12 times just on accident so like it's gonna be it's gonna take a time you're at three now (laughs) I know but like that's it's gonna take some time to like actually make it natural to say palisades Mm. when you're referring to the mountain but like you know I just think that for the people that are kind of like frustrated by it or whatever like 
it just honestly it doesn't matter like what matters is the mountain and the people and certainly not any group of letters you know mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i think so that, what's so why you know, so why the problem right exactly yeah, yeah. you could call it Call it whatever. You could call it White Mountain. Call, just or call what, it or anything as long mountain. as it's not like offensive or yeah. causing someone pain, right? Mountain with trees resort. Like California. When, <laughs> when you think about it that way, like something that is your favorite thing in your life mm-hmm. causing someone else pain. Like if you just think about it that way, then it's like, why are we even having a conversation about it? Just boom, yeah. done, move on, you know? Exactly. So. There you go. Yeah. Right on. Well, then um, any big plans for you guys for winter lining up here? Uh, yeah, just trying. What can we look forward to from you guys? I mean, that's a good question. I have, well, I have a lot of ideas. I'm always, you know, hoping. Uh, of course, you know, I've done so many things with uh, TGR. I always hope that there's like a good synergy to work there. But even now, you never really totally know what will happen on that front. Um, I have, I don't know if I should say too much, but certainly some concepts would be more like a web based series i think which i hope maybe to get launched this year and then thankfully one of the coolest things for me about you know being on the armada team is that like it's such a sick group of skiers that like you know anytime i get to do stuff with armada usually is a great trip just because it's like going skiing with sammy or you know who's like one of my favorite skiers and someone i like to ski with or you know so definitely some armada stuff for sure and but really being flexible is the main thing and yeah has to um, be where it's good, I, you know? I mean, that's the, still the basic part for me is, like, the reason on a personal level I do this is because you get that freedom to have yeah. a good season, kind of regardless of what happens, because you can just go where yeah, it's but, good. Have, a, have a kind of a, a, you know, base of things that you'd like to accomplish, and right. then keep it open and see which one yeah. is going to fit within this opportunity, totally. right? Yeah. I think that, like, it's kind of funny, because I think it's everyone's, like, favorite question to ask, like, what are your plans this season? Like, the honest truth is, like, I have no idea. You know, like I think, and we never do it this time of year because like they, they, it all lines up, right? Like I've been like neck deep in post-production on Boots Over Brim until like, I'm not even done. Like I still have a whole online rollout. So like I have like another week of like eyeball deep work. I don't have time to like, it's hard because like I need to be pitching and proposing and concepting and budgeting whatever I'm doing next, but like I'm not done with what I've done. So it's kind of like- You need an assistant. It's Well, it's just the she timing does. of it. And I think that the films are in the sure. same place or whatever. And so like, I think that the truth is like, we have no idea what we're doing. Like Boots Over Brim, I didn't know for sure that Boots Over Brim was like happening until like- You were at that bar. July. Yeah. Like seriously, like, and gosh, hats off to Sweetgrass for just like- believing in me and rolling with the punches. Like we started filming before we had any reasonable amount of funding secured, you know, like, so I think that that's kind of like the truth behind the curtain is like, we don't know so much of what we do is reliant on budgets and companies and companies budgets aren't finalized. And we don't know, like, you know, we don't know what that looks like even yet. So I think it's about like, it's the worst part of the game. is just like ugh, waiting, the waiting game. But that's how, but that's how out. we score it. Right. Like there's, it's hard for me. Cause I'm like, I've, we've talked about this a lot over the past few days, but like I'm a complete control freak who would like to have everything planned out to a T, but in this life, in this world, in what we're trying to accomplish, we can't. Cause like, we have no idea where it's going to shape up weather wise, stability and all that. So we just have to like roll with the punches. And mm-hmm. like, I always try to like invent something to say when, cause this time of year at the movie appears, everyone's like, what are you doing this season? And I, sometimes I just like, Make shit up, like oh yeah, we're we're just just saying, this I person. Have, I have no idea, but it's gonna be but rad. I feel like that's where at this point I'm just like, I have actually no idea, but something will happen. Are you, are you enjoying going to these tour stops where you're not having to like f- track down HDMI cords and oh. like the Warren Miller shows? Yeah, like you just go and show up, sign a few things, mm-hmm. and say hi to people. And just I mean, chill. the Warren Miller shows are a totally different beast though because they're so big and there's so oh, many true. people and there's so many kids and you got like, I mean, there it. This is it's intense when you're sitting at a table you and there's the signing hand. There's literally like at Boulder, there was a line of like 200 kids out the door and around the block, like just like fiending for a poster. And like that's a lot of, that's heavy in a different way. That's you a know, lot like of energy, yeah. running around trying to dial in the sound system last night was stressful. But then like tonight in Seattle, and there's like 200 kids staring at you. You're like, oh my god, what am I gonna say to you? But hey, but best case scenario, <laughs> I mean, I think is to, you know still be part of these bigger yeah. events and things, but then also be able to do stuff. I like feel like that's my ideal is like be part of one of the bigger films wanna, I mean, and then we, also of kind of bring something big production. I mean, that's yeah. I think, still I think like what the you're best, gonna, you know, filmers and yeah. things and yeah, lining up the big, environment and to and do big stuff. And you see all these people you know? and I love being part of the Warren Miller movies. It's just so much like legacy and it's a I, totally different demographic. I and, think now that you've done this tour, 
you're going to start seeing things differently from these, these bigger tours and say, how did this mm. operate? What did they do here? Like technical mm. stuff, like the planning side, you're going to be sitting around and look over and be like, oh, that's how they did that. Yeah, right? no, to be honest sure. with you, though, like everyone's like, I can't believe you did this. And I was like, I can't believe you think we couldn't do it. Like, I, I know what you're saying and I know it's a lot of work, but like. Now, is we, it, now, is, it, is, it, it. is it, I don't believe you could do it or like, I can't believe you actually, you took the energy and the yeah, time. No, people are like, it, people right? are like, I can't believe you pulled this off. Like that takes a lot of work. You know, it's so hard and da, da, da. And like the truth of it is, it's like, not really. I don't know. Just, just I mean, do like, it. Amy's like a good thing. producer. I, but the you point is, is that happen. people want to be part of yeah. events that they like or whatever. And so people want to help you out with it. You know? Yeah. Have like, you already got ideas for next year? Um, something you I don't know. You know, I think we, we were saying it, it's be good to have like a debrief, you know, like what did you learn like over the course of going to so many different venues or, or, or whatever, the mix of the films or all these things. And, uh, we got a lot of feedback that people want more that. of it. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of hard to scale something when we're not making money or charging money. So I think that there's ways we can get creative with setting it up in the future where we can have it be maybe a bigger, more robust event, but still keep the, the ethos the same and, Keep it free and community focused. Do it in a way where it's kind of the same, like you said, kind of same aesthetic, but also maybe put a little bit of money in your pocket just as like nonprofits, the people mm -hmm. that work at nonprofits still get paid. Right. Yeah, but and I, I think, don't mean like yeah, make yeah, a ton, yeah. but just pay no, for your time. I think you can see a lot of examples where companies get, like if you're talking about business tactics, where you get focused on growth too mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's what we want to do with Pat Town. You know, I think a lot of people have come to us and been like, this could be huge. And we're like... Something We'd rather really, have it yeah. be cool and like authentic. The, the than fact huge. that we like actually did have some bigger venues that were like at an over capacity is like yeah. that's to we're, me that's amazing. You know, so. I think we'll definitely do it again. I think it's you know just see what it, the landscape is like next year. You know, yeah, I dig it. But, and you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's always the same. I mean, people are still finishing their projects. Projects are coming out now, but I think in the future for me, it's like I'd love to actually be done with projects. In this case, my project was done, so I wasn't on that level. But like, you know, if be ready for the traditional ski film timeline, it's just you know, you get know, it out a little September earlier. one or whatever. Those yeah. things should be finished. Although, I know that the big productions also have have that at times where they literally are it's so getting hard their to final export, like the day of like the war, like a big world premiere. You know, like mm -hmm. that. That's the same for them too. But I mean, for yeah. Be cool to have like a exporting, collection exporting, of films like then, dialed in early. I just think like I think moving forward, we want to keep it going. Grow it, make it viable, but like I don't want to become. Let's go to like Yvonne Chouinard style, you know, like responsible growth. Be mellow. Not we're not worried. Like I don't think that I'm gonna get rich putting on ski movie tours, so I'm not going to try to. Right. You know what I mean? Like nah, I'm gonna do this me, for I mean, passion. I, for I, I don't know. I did. He's like for that me, element of it's like a nominal fee. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's like a nominal fee. It's <laughs> like not. I'm. I'm sure people are willing to pay it, but I also just. To me, it's an opportunity. I mean, everything in skiing is so expensive right now, you know, and like that's been as a skier who wants to include everybody it's or, nice, or grew nice. up in a place where yeah. my season pass was $90 or whatever, you know, I mean, it's a nice, I just want to, yeah, exactly. You just want to do like, yeah. it's not, you know, free, you know, I mean, it's like, certain lift ticket costs you it's a, a passion money, project. Like, yeah. like it, it looks, it presents like it's like, like we're doing something, but this is a passion project. That's cool. So, and we well, want to keep it that way. Well, um, thanks for having me this week. I had tons of fun. So yeah, glad you came down. Yeah, it was good to hang out and see a bunch of people. I got a bunch of episodes done. Like, it was yeah. like very validating. You're like, I want to come down to like Powtown. I was like, you you know what we're doing? You've heard? What? A yeah. church? Totally. I come was down. watching your stuff and I was sitting at home. Like I said, I did, I organized the whole I Three festival, which is kind of a bigger, bigger mm -hmm. thing. Mm. And I was like, I want to go see this because it's a little smaller. Right. It's a little more curated films that, that are, that are have personal connections to you. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. I was telling you before about the athlete edits and you can make it your thing. Well, this is kind of on that same totally. profile, right? Mm -hmm. You get to, you know, do a solid for your good friends. Like, yeah. Oh, you got a project. Yeah. Come and join us. Oh, and, and they did. And they thing. did join us. That was cool. Like, you know, we had different athletes at the different stops, yeah. which is really cool for us. Cause like, I'm happy to introduce the film, but I'd still rather for the audience's sake, like have, you know, like we had Wiley for these last stops, yeah. like, and they get, have they get it, more yeah. attention that way too when it's yeah. just in this nice little curated box rather than this big festival where you know when you go to a movie festival and you're mm -hmm. like okay I want to see this band this band this band yeah, this yeah. is at that stage oh these two bands are playing at the same time or mm -hmm. whatever it may be right or like yeah. I, I, I don't want to pay to go to two different nights yeah. whereas you can just go and see this 
really cool eclectic mix of films that are all a little different and I think you guys did a great job yeah thank you thank appreciate you. that you're welcome and I know that you have to go I have to drive to the airport right now mm-hmm. so yeah we well oh, yeah. soonish yeah, yeah pretty much so okay. well, thank you guys for having me down it was thanks. super fun thanks for having yeah, us on the Little Culture Podcast I, again yeah I just needed to like hang out Oh, good. I yeah. wanted to see some friends. I wanted to hang out. I wanted to get out of my bubble. Yeah, well, good. Happy, happy you could join us. And I want to come to the next year's one too. Yeah. Do a Whistler one. Okay. I'll help you out. Okay. Inter- <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's the bigger if, cost. Is when you think about it for us, is like you got to be at these places to to screen it, right? So mm-hmm. like then then there's a travel cost involved, but travel yeah, cost and like time it cost. Out. But mm-hmm. it seemed like it was good. Like and like that. I liked. To, we didn't really get into. Maybe we can talk about this. I'll talk about this for yourself, but we didn't really get into the very like, specifics about how different everything was. We did yeah. a little bit, but uh, you got to go. Thank it's you so much uh, for an awesome week. Um, have a safe trip to Seattle, and um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Sweet. Till next time. Till next time. <laughs> You've been listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. This has been a Redmark Media production.